Welcome to OK Managers. As you may know, if you've watched some recent videos, I've been getting into dioramas, especially fancy dioramas. But really, it's time I dived right in and got full on into dioramas. So I decided to do a dragon diorama with fire, because of course. I used two models for this. I printed a aboleth. I believe is what it's called, and a dragon, both by MZ4250. He makes some really great D&D models, so I'd highly recommend checking him out. I 3D printed these models and just cleaned them up using IPA, and then set them outside to cure. After that, I primed them with a basic pr uh, brush on primer and then painted them up. I wanted to have like a red versus blue sort of theme going on, so I painted the dragon red, even though it's technically like a bronze or brass dragon, and I painted the Ableth blue, even though I have no idea what color they're technically supposed to be. But anyway, that's what I was going with, and I was going to have the dragon breathing fire and the Ableth breathing water, spitting out water. Um, again, they probably don't actually do that in the game, but that's what I was doing. And it was the best water monster that I found. For the fire and water, I used cotton balls. So what I did was I soaked the, mixed some water with paint, acrylic paint, and then I soaked the cotton balls in it and squeezed out the extra water. And that way they got a little bit of that pigment in them so that the cotton balls looked a little bit pink or yellow or blue to give it a little bit more to get away from the bland white standard cotton ball look. After I squeezed out the extra um, water, I puffed them out a little bit just to help them dry a little bit faster and then I set them in the sun and left them for a few hours. While those were drying, I started working on the base. So I wanted to have water for the Aboleth to be in and then the dragon flying over land. Um, I wasn't actually going to do land originally, I was just going to have water, but I didn't have a container big enough for the right size to have both of them over the water. So I just added on some land so that for my resin pour, I would, wouldn't need as big of a container. So for the land, I used some styrofoam and I just kind of ripped it up a little bit to give it more rocky texture. And then I covered it with um, PVA glue mixed with a little bit of water. And I also used that to put on some paper towel. I would recommend paper towel with less texture. Um, the texture is still a little bit visible now, but it's not too noticeable. I really tried to hurry it up with a hair dryer since I was trying to get my resin pour done before night so it could cure overnight. Um, so I used a hair dryer to dry the PVA glue a little bit faster. Once the glue is dry, I put on some basic paint. So uh, just a splotchy orange, red, gray, a little bit black um, base coat. And then I covered that all with a good chunk of brown um, just to give it a little bit more variation than just a standard brown paint. Then once the paint was dry, I was ready for the resin pour. To make the little container um, sealed, I hot glued the plastic, piece of junk plastic that I had, to the styrofoam, which wasn't ideal since the hot glue did rip away some of the paint off the styrofoam later, but that was easy enough to touch up, so it wasn't a huge deal. The plastic also was kind of thin, which made it easy to warp and so I did notice later that 
V resin um, that I poured did have a bit of a warped bottom and the sides kind of caved in as the resin changed, uh, expanded it, or I think contracted when it dried um, or cured. Uh, it, things kind of pulled in. To cut the um, resin, I shaved some, I powderized a piece of pastel. So I just found a nice blue color and then I just used the sharp edge of my knife to just rub away a layer bit, at, bit by bit. And then I mixed that pastel powder with one part of the resin just to get the color through there and then I poured the other, the second part of the resin together which would make it start curing and mix those together afterward. Then it was back to the fire and water. So I cut a small cardboard circle to separate the fire and the water um, so that when they hit they'd have like a vertical line, or not necessarily vertical, but a, a plane where they didn't really cross over, just kind of like they hit each other and there was that um, conflict, that pressure against each other where neither was really gaining or losing ground. And then I put a toothpick through the center to form the structure for the flame or water, depending on the size. For the fire, I started hot gluing yellow cotton balls around the stick and also the cardboard circle, poofing it out a little bit, um, just playing with the shape to make it look like what you'd imagine a dragon spinning fire would look like. Um, and then when I was happy with the look of it, I took a little bit of red spray paint and just kind of sprayed the end of the with, where it kind of billowed out um, by the cardboard. I sprayed the edges of that red and then I also did just a touch of black for to give it kind of a smoky look. And then once that was dry I poofed them out a little bit just to let some of that yellow peek through again, which I think looked really awesome. For the blue I did a similar thing except I did not do any spray um, paint on it. I just kept it as simple cotton balls. I'm not really sure what uh, special effects I could do with water. I feel like there's something that I could do a little bit more on, uh, especially to give it like a glossy look or like a, a wet look. But I tried a little bit of um, clear coat, glossy clear coat on a extra cotton ball and it just didn't quite look right. So that's just something I'll have to keep in the back of my mind to figure out sometime. When I was happy with the fire and water, I went on to dremel in some wave shapes. So I just took a dremel bit and cut kind of random grooves in the water, in the resin, um, nothing too particular. I tried to make them pretty choppy out in the more open water by th where the abolith is, and then um, longer, smoother ones towards shore, like the, w the waves have bro broken and they're more rolling in. And then I went to clear coat it. I wanted to make the Dremel areas nice and shiny, like water, uh, make it look nice. I don't actually know how this is supposed to look, so I was just like, we'll give it a try. Hope for the best. Worst comes to worst, it'll just be basically the same. I tested out my clear coat on a cotton ball and it looked pretty white. I was like, I don't remember it being white, but it must dry clear. And then as I spread, sprayed my model, I realized the horrible truth. And <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. It was a pretty horrible moment. But I didn't really wallow in that. Immediately I went and found some mineral spirits and started cleaning off the white spray paint. It took probably an hour of work out in the hot sun, but I was determined to get that cleaned and actually clear coated. And then I went to for real clear coat it. Um, and it's, you know, it's, I wish they would like color coat these things, right? Like white for the white spray paint and clear for the, oh, yeah. Anyway, so 
I put a clear coat on and it looked pretty good. But I, my one regret about this whole ordeal is I don't really know what just a clear coat on the Dremel surface would look like. And you look at these videos online and they do this dremeling process and then they use this clear coat and the waves look gorgeous. They look crystal clear like they had been polished. And I just wish I knew if they had been polished or if it was just the clear coat doing that. But anyway, that will be a test for another day, I suppose. And hopefully it won't be quite the same as this. <laughs> um, after that, I attached the dragon using some armature wire. I stabbed it into the foam and twisted it around one of his feet. Uh, and then I used some undergrowth stuff or something that kind of looked like trees. I just glued a few of them on the base for some greenery and also onto the armature wire to, to disguise it as a tree. It looks, I think it looks pretty good. I, maybe not quite there, but it's pretty good. Finally, I added some white paint intentionally this time for a wake around the ambleth and kind of where his tentacle things are coming out of the water, spraying water, that kind of thing. And then I just needed to glue in the fire and the water effects. And there it is. I'm super, super happy with it. I really love the fire effect. I just, it looks so cool and awesome with the smoke kind of black color coming through with some reds and then that yellow coming out of his mouth. It just, it really looks awesome. And also it's a dragon, like you can't go wrong with dragons. Um, If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Um, and if you'd like to see more diorama, train building sort of content like this, please consider subscribing. And um, if you have any ideas or suggestions for me, please let me know down in the comments below. And with that, I'll see you in the future.